In this video, I'm going to show you a full step-by-step -step tutorial on how to use Wealthsimple, including how to research different stocks and ETFs, as well as how to buy and sell them. And I'll even make a few trades in my own retirement account so that you can see the process of how that works. And I'll walk you through why I choose the investments that I do. So if you're a beginner to Wealthsimple, or if you're thinking about getting started investing your own money and taking control of your own financial destiny, then this video has you covered because I'm gonna walk through all of the different useful features of Wealthsimple that might also help make you a better investor. So for starters, the first thing that you have to do is either download the app or go to the web browser and sign up for an account with Wealthsimple Trade that way. Now you can do only one or both of these and it's gonna be the exact same login information to access it, but I do recommend using the app because it has some features that aren't available on the website. Now once you sign up for Wealthsimple Trade, you have to decide which type of account you want to be making your investments in. And this is an important decision that's going to have implications at tax time. And there's lots of different types of accounts. So I'm briefly going to break them down right now and talk about the benefits of each. For starters, there's Wealthsimple Invest versus Wealthsimple Trade. Now we're talking about Wealthsimple Trade right now, which is essentially a way for you to take control of your own money and to invest it yourself. So you have to pick and choose which investments to make, be it stocks, bonds, or ETFs. But if you've reached this point and you decide you're actually more interested in just letting someone else manage your money for you, then Wealthsimple Invest might be a better strategy for you where the app will pick a portfolio for you based on what you say your level of risk tolerance is and it automates everything. All you have to do is just add money to it and then it automatically creates a portfolio for you. However, in this video, we're talking about well simple trade, and this is for people that are more interested in taking control. Now, once you've decided to take control of your money and invest in well simple trade, there's different types of accounts. There's a tax free savings account. There's an RRSP, a registered retirement savings plan. There's a basic cash investing account or a non registered account. There's crypto. There's a savings account and you can also sign up for a first home saving account where you can invest in order to buy a new home at some point in the future. Now there's different advantages of using these different types of accounts. For the tax free savings account, you put money in that you've already paid your income tax on and then when you make withdrawals at some point in the future, you don't have to pay tax on any gains that you get from investing in that account, which is great. With the RRSP, you put pre-tax money in and then the money is taxed when you take it out at a future date. Then with the non-registered or the cash account, there's no tax benefit to it whatsoever. So I don't actually recommend using it unless you've absolutely maxed out your contributions to the TFSA and the RRSP. Then you have the crypto account. So if you want to make investments in cryptocurrency, you can do that through the Wealthsimple app. There is no tax advantage. It's just a basic investment portfolio app that also does crypto. There's a savings account that's gonna pay you a higher yield just for keeping your deposits here in the app. And maybe that's something you're interested in if you wanna earn a couple of percentage points, but you're not quite ready to invest it in the market. And then finally, that first home savings account is another tax advantage way that you can save up and invest for a first home. Now, a great thing about all this is that you can actually open each different type of account if you're so inclined. So you can see that in my Wealthsimple account, I've opened up several of these, but really I would say if you're a true beginner, definitely focus on the TFSA and the RRSP because there's tax advantages to those. And if you reach a point where you've maxed out your contribution room to those, then you can move on to the other ones. And on the Wealthsimple home screen, you can track the progress of your portfolio over time, including all of the different accounts that you have in it. So it adds up the TFSA and the RRSP and the cash account and the crypto. And it shows up here and you can see the performance of your portfolio over whatever time frame that you want to look at it. Now, right now, the app seems to be glitching a little bit because it's showing that the non-registered account is down 97.33% all time but it's not that I actually lost 97.33% of my money. I just withdrew it to a different account. I actually put it into the TFSA. So I'm not sure why it says that. Usually it wouldn't do that. Now let me talk a little bit about the basics of how I research and choose investments by using the app. So for starters, if you know what you're looking for, you can go to the search tab and you can look for a ticker symbol. So let's say I wanted to buy some shares in Apple. Well, I could search for the ticker symbol and then click on it. And there's some basic information in here, including the price chart going all the way back to the last five years. So you can see the performance of the stock. And then if you scroll down, you can see some very basic rudimentary information about the company. For example, how big is it? The market cap 
or what's the price to earnings ratio? Right now, 29.32. You can also see some details on the performance of the stock so far. And the bottom right number here, yield, is talking about the dividend payout that the stock pays. So Apple doesn't pay a very big dividend, but some stocks do. So this is where you can find basic information about this stock. There's also gonna be news. So if there's anything interesting that's happened recently with the stock, it's gonna show up here in the news section. Now that's pretty much all the information you're gonna find about a stock in Wellsimple. It's not actually that useful for doing research if you're starting from absolute scratch. So I would say that if you want to learn more about a company, you have to do a deeper dive off of this platform. Now, a couple useful features to point out here. Let's say you wanna buy Apple, but you're not quite ready to buy it right just yet. Well, in the top right corner, you'll notice a star which you can hit, and that's gonna add it to your watch list so you can keep an eye on this over time and see if there's a point where you actually wanna buy in. And the bell is actually gonna set up price alerts if you want to. So let's say you want to set up an alert for if the price decreases by something like 10%. Well, you can set that up. Now going back to the main search tab, let's say that you have no idea what stock you want to buy whatsoever. Well, there's ways that you can use this section here to get some inspiration. So for example, you can look at what the top stocks in Canada are, and these are the stocks that are trading the most, the highest volume. And you can scroll through this and see if there's anything that you would want to learn more about. For example, what is this Aston Bay company? Well, if I scroll down here, I can see that it's a mining company. You can also look for things like top gainers. So these are the stocks that have performed the best, or you can look at top losers. These are stocks that are currently performing the worst, but maybe you think there's an opportunity for one of these to turn it around. Now, I'm not necessarily suggesting that you would just buy these stocks right here. This is just a way that you can do some research and figure out what you might want to invest in. Another useful way that you can search for stocks is by using the categories feature. So let's say that you're interested in investing in aerospace and defense because you think something about the macro environment is gonna be bullish for the future of that industry. Well, you can look at all of the different stocks that are trading on the app that fall within that spectrum of aerospace and defense, and you can pick and choose companies that way. Another great way to find an investment if you want to invest in a specific sector, or if you want to invest in, say, the entire market of Canada or the US is to look at ETFs. And this is a really risk-weighted way to invest in an entire economy or an entire sector. So for example, this top ETF here is VFV, the Vanguard S&P 500 ETF, and this tracks the 500 largest companies in the US. So that's always a pretty good bet. But if you wanted to invest in something that's more sector specific, for example, ARK-K is an investment ETF that focuses on technology and innovation. And there are tons of different options here to invest in different markets around the world, different sectors, to invest in combinations of stocks and bonds or just bonds or corporate bonds. And there's also real estate investment trusts, which is a way that you can invest in real estate without having to actually buy the properties and manage them yourself. So yeah, that is a useful way that you can get inspiration through the app in terms of finding investments. However, I definitely recommend that you do additional research off this platform. For example, go to Google, try and find information about an ETF, try and find news articles about it, maybe look at things like Seeking Alpha or Yahoo Finance to see if there's other useful things that you need to know before making an investment. Now, another thing that you can do with Wealthsimple is trade options. And I'm not really gonna get into it now because it's definitely not for beginners. But let's say that you think the price of Tesla is going to go up by the end of this year, but you don't want to buy shares of Tesla because it's quite expensive. Well, you can buy an option on the future price of Tesla for a much smaller amount than you can actually buy the shares today. And then if the price hits your target, you will make a profit. And if it doesn't, you will lose the total amount of the option that you buy. So playing with options is definitely a riskier strategy that I don't recommend for beginners, but it is available through the app if that's something you're interested in. And another useful feature in the app is that you can actually buy fractional shares of certain companies and ETFs. It's not available for all companies and ETFs, but if you see this little pie chart looking symbol beside a stock name, then that means you can buy fractional shares. So if you wanted to buy some shares shares of Tesla, for example, you don't have to buy one full share. You can actually buy half a share or 
10% of a share. It's totally up to you. And this is a nice feature to have for stocks that are really expensive. If a share is trading at $10 or $20 per share, you don't really need fractional shares. But if it's $1,000 a share, then having the option to invest in the company without having to put $1,000 up front is a nice feature. Now, let me take you into one of my investment portfolios here and show you what I'm invested in and why I've chosen that strategy. Now, first of all, Globally, one thing I'll say is that I try not to invest in US companies through the Wellsimple app because exchange rates on this app is really where they make their money. It's $0 trades, which is one of the great benefits of using Wellsimple, but if you're buying shares of US companies listed on US exchanges, you're gonna get hit with, I think it's 1.5% exchange rates. So I don't actually recommend buying US dollar shares of companies through Wellsimple. For that, I use other platforms, and this is really what I use for most of my Canadian investing. Now I'm gonna show you my RRSP account, and this is an ETF only portfolio, which means that I am not investing in individual companies here, but rather I'm investing in a basket of ETFs or exchange traded funds that I think is giving me a pretty well-rounded exposure to global markets and different sectors as well. Now the basic strategy behind ETF only investing is that you get a really diversified portfolio, which is great. So for example, this portfolio has four ETFs in it. The biggest position I have is XUU, which is the S&P total US market ETF, not just the 500 biggest companies, but I believe this ETF has something like three or 4,000 different companies that are made up within it. So by buying one share of XUU, I'm essentially buying tiny fractional amounts of the three or 4,000 different companies that are held within this ETF. And it only costs $44 Canadian per share right now. I'm trying to allocate 50% of my total RSP account to this. Currently, we're sitting at 48.3 because over time, investing in the US stock market has been one of the safest and also less risky approaches to investing. And so this ETF is a great way to get exposure to that. Now, the next largest position I have in this portfolio is VCN, which tracks the total Canadian market. And I'm trying to target around 20 to 25% of my portfolio in this one. And the reason why it's important to have geographic diversification as well as sector diversification in a well-rounded portfolio is that different countries and different economies around the world will do well at different times, depending on what resources they have. For example, Canada has a lot of natural resource stocks and it's also pretty heavy on the finance side of things, for example, with banking. But other markets around the world might have different focuses on, for example, manufacturing or things like that. So by having geographic diversification, I'm decreasing the risk of an investment portfolio like this. Now, the third largest position in this ETF only portfolio is VIU, which tracks global developed markets, excluding North America. So this means countries like Japan or Australia or European countries. And with this, I'm also targeting around 20% of the portfolio, and it gives me exposure to several thousand companies worldwide. And then the final position in this portfolio is a cryptocurrency ETF, which tracks Bitcoin and Ethereum. I'm targeting five to 10% of this portfolio just to have a little bit of that extra exposure to what I think is a sector that does have potential for explosive growth over the next five to 10 years. Although it is risky, which is why I'm only putting a small allocation of this portfolio into this ETF. Now, let me show you how to actually buy and sell shares in the app. You can see that I currently have $300 available to trade in this portfolio. So I'm gonna buy a couple shares of XUU because I want to increase the size of this position and also because I'm employing something called a dollar cost average trading strategy, which simply means that I regularly put money into the account and then purchase shares of this ETF regardless of what the price is at. And so over time, I'm increasing the size of my position. If the market's going down, it means I'm investing at a lower price. If the market's going up, I'm investing at a higher price. But in the long term, it doesn't matter because I don't have to try and time the market. I'm simply a buy and hold investor here. So if I want to trade this ETF, I simply click on it and then I can either hit the buy or the sell button. In this case, I wanna buy and then it pops up asking me which account I wanna purchase it in. In this case, I wanna buy it through my RRSP. And then you get to this screen here where you can choose what type of order you wanna place. Now market buy means you're simply gonna be purchasing shares at whatever price is on offer right now. A limit buy, however, is where you can set the price that you wanna purchase this stock at. So currently it's trading at $44.25. If I wanted to buy it at $44 a share, I could set a buy order and then if the stock price hits that target, my order would execute automatically, which is a useful feature 
if you have a specific price in mind that you want to buy or sell at. This stock also offers fractional buys if I wanted to. So I can choose, say, if I wanted to buy half of a share, if I didn't have enough to buy a whole share. I'm not going to do that right now. Then there is stop limit orders, which is a little bit more complicated. But let's say I wanted to sell my position if the price went up by 20%. Well, I could set a stop limit so that if the price exceeded that, then it would automatically trigger an order at that point. And finally, there's a recurring buy. So let's say you wanted to automatically make purchases every month on the same day in order to automate the process of building up your portfolio. Well, you can set that up through this app as well. And the recurring buy feature is great for people that are employing the dollar cost averaging strategy because you don't actually have to manually transfer money and make the purchases. If you don't want to, you can be super lazy and set it up to happen automatically. Now for today, I'm simply gonna make a market purchase of four shares. I'm gonna hit continue, and then I have to confirm the order one more time, and it goes through. Now going back to the portfolio here, I'm also gonna buy a couple shares of VCN, the Canadian index, at the market price. So let me confirm that order there. And then finally, I'm gonna buy one share of VIU at the market price. So let me confirm this here. Okay, a couple final points that I wanted to talk about, including when should you sell? Well, there's no hard and fast rule on this, and really it depends on your strategy. What are you investing for? Are you investing to buy a home in the next two years or three years? Or are you investing for retirement 20 years from now? Because your time horizon for investing is obviously gonna play a major factor in making those types of decisions. However, I will say that it is very difficult to try and time the market. And you may think that you're getting in at the bottom, but it goes lower, or you may think that you're selling at the top, but then it goes higher. And really, studies have shown that the best approach to investing is to simply buy and hold over many, many years or even many decades, because that is really the best way to ensure that you get the compounding snowball effect of investing over the long term. There's also the consideration of should you be a dividend investor or a growth investor. Dividend investors find companies that pay cash every quarter or every year to shareholders and then they try and accumulate enough cash from those dividends to either reinvest or to potentially live off at some point in the future. And on the other hand, you have growth investors who aren't worried about getting cash flow from their stocks, but they're trying to invest in companies that are gonna have explosive growth so that they can sell at a higher price at some point in the future and make their money that way. And so really which type of investor you want to be has to be your own personal choice based on your risk appetite and also based on whether or not you like the idea of having a regular dividend income or if you're more interested in investing in companies that will potentially grow a lot in the future. And one final point that I wanna make is that the tax implications of selling is something you consider before you make the sale. Now, if you're trading in a tax-free savings account, it's not a big deal. However, you can't day trade. In a TFSA, you're only allowed to make long-term investments. And if the Canadian Revenue Agency finds out that you've been day trading and making a lot of money that way, then you could get dinged with a tax bill anyways, even though it's in a tax-free account. On the other hand, if you're investing in a cash account, you're gonna be paying tax every time you make a sale if there's capital gains. And so that's something you have to be aware of and make sure you understand the tax implications by speaking to a professional before you actually take profits. Thanks so much for watching. And if you wanted to sign up for the app using my referral code, you'll get a bonus and I'll get a bonus. And I'm gonna throw a link down below. Have a great day.